Thanks for staying with us. Now, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, is set to stop acting as the middleman in purchasing petrol from the Dangote refinery, ending its exclusive agreement and allowing marketers to buy directly from the refinery. This move will shift petrol pricing to a cost-reflective model, eliminating subsidies as marketers negotiate prices directly with Dangote refinery, potentially leading to a higher fuel price. Industry stakeholders, including the Major in Energies Marketers Association of Nigeria, Neman, are awaiting official announcement from the NNPCL or Dangote Refinery for further clarity on this development. Our guest this morning is uh, Nick Agule, an energy expert. Good morning and welcome to the program, Nick. Good morning, Yamgo, and good morning to our viewers globally. Okay, should we, we be worried or elated that uh, Dan, uh, that uh, NNPCL will not be a middleman anymore? Uh, yes, we should. We should be very happy that uh, finally the Nigerian consumers will be able to interact with the supplier of uh, petrol to the Nigerian market. That is exactly what it needs to. That that's exactly what needs to happen. That even the uh, marketers, whether major or, or minor, that goes to Dangote refinery to go and buy uh, petroleum products and then sell them to the Nigerian public, that is some sort of competition. Because you'll be surprised that. If uh, marketer A goes to buy a Dangote refinery for a particular price, marketer B goes to buy at a particular price, both of them may sell at different prices to try and take the market. You know, in the bid to try and take the market, they can sell at different prices. It's possible that one marketer may have comparative advantage over the other one. Maybe he has storage facilities. You know, he, he can lift more volume because he has more petrol stations and all of that. And then those who are taking the products up north, they will know that, okay, if I transfer my products from Dangote refinery to Abuja, for instance, maybe 10 marketers transfer their products from Dangote refinery to Abuja. You know, one marketer will not be able to cheat the public, if I want to say that, or let me just say overprice his product because the other guys are also wanting to sell and go back and buy again. So you will not discover that even in the days when people used to take a lot of money from us through petroleum equalization fund, uh, to, in a bid to try and sell petrol at the same price across the nation and then be racketeering and all of that, all those things will disappear. Because if a marketer pays, um, maybe 300,000 to move uh, 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 the product from uh, Dangote refinery to Abuja. He cannot just bill the consumers 1 million. Because if you bill the consumers 1 million, the other marketers will bill the consumers only 300,000 in the price of what they are selling and they will take the market from you. So this is what we needed right from the beginning, that let the Nigerian consumers interact with the person that has this petrol so that we can now see the real price for petrol. Because as we speak today, I am not aware that Dangote Refinery has actually opened his mouth and said how much exactly he is selling his petrol to Nigerians. But if the NNPC shifts away and the marketers go in to deals with Dangote Refinery directly, we will be able to know how much uh, petrol is costing. And you know what? Since the NNPC produced that their first template, that template where they used plat and petrol was to sell for 950 naira in the Lagos area and then a thousand plus or going further up north. The two dynamics for determination of petrol prices have since changed. The price of crude oil actually went all the way down to almost like $60. It's now back up to the $70 uh, range. The exchange rate has also got a bit better, you know, from the 1,600 that the NAPCA used to about uh, 1,500. So, so things have moved 
favorably to the Nigerian consumer. And if we had a genuine market, if we had a legitimate market, immediately the price of crude oil went down and the exchange rate got better. Then that 950 naira, even that 950 naira that the NPC calculated, should have been tending towards this, the 700, 800 mark now. But that has not happened because we know the NPC. This is their game to use petrol to take money from Nigerians. And this is why they didn't want to leave that space. Yeah, but I, I don't know. These market forces you're talking about uh, that should happen if everybody's lifting fuel from uh, Dangote refinery, I don't know if it is going to happen that way because even the aviation industry, for instance, they were pegging a price and the federal government was crying at some point that they shouldn't do this. Every association in Nigeria or every thing in Nigeria has an association and they decide in those associations what they are going to do. Do you really think there will be market forces playing out here where some filling stations will be selling for less and others selling for more? So the, the scenario you have described is very uh, legitimate. And this is the reason why you have uh, regulators to stop something like that from happening. So if you read the news as well as you know, as you very well know, any, anywhere in the world where regulators come to understand that suppliers of goods and services are fixing prices, they are colluding, you know. So this is what you call the trust to fix prices. That is a serious crime. You know, and as you will see in other jurisdictions, those involved are not only fined, but the the management team of those companies are actually put through trial and jailed. And this is where you know the Nigerian regulators, and specifically in this case, there are two uh, regulators. The first being the Nigerian midstream and downstream petroleum regulatory authority. NMDPRA, and the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Council. These two regulators must be up to their game to ensure that the Nigerian consumer is not suffering from price fixing by the operators in the petroleum sector. And then you made the mention of the other uh, situation where you say government is the one who is fixing prices and, or telling suppliers not to fix prices and all of that. And that is, that is not right. So the role of government should not be to fix prices. Once you begin to fix prices, you are no longer in an efficient market. You are back to uh, either subsidy regime or you are uh, trying to, to force the hands of suppliers uh, to, to either make um, setting profits or even losses and all of that. Just leave the market to play out against itself so that you will see truly businesses coming in with innovative ideas to try and put products in the market at a lower price than their competitors. And their competitors responding to do the same. You know, that's all you need. You know, if you remember Yambu, if you remember when telecommunications was privatized fully. The first company that came in was the MTN. And they came in, they were selling their starter pack at a very high cost. If I remember, was it 50,000 or 25,000, high cost. I remember when I was in Potaco, when I bought it. And also they said that, oh, per billion, uh, per second billion was impossible. Until even when the other two came in, the, 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 the price of the starter pack started to come down, but all of them agreed with MTN that per, per second billion was impossible. Immediately, Gross stepped into the fray. Gross said, we are launching our service with per second billion. Do you know the next day, MTN and the other two that had come in also started per second billion? This is competition for you. You know, when you have competition, consumers get the best deal. So these regulators must ensure the market is competitive. That's what they are being paid for. Well, when you have regulators, when you have uh, competition and all that, you're saying that. I do not know how fair that will be because the market is controlled by one person who sets his own prices. So 
when the marketers are regulated, who regulates Dangote? Dangote also has his regulator, which is the same Nigerian midstream and downstream petroleum regulatory authority. And that regulator has powers to go into Dangote, to look into Dangote's books, and see how much Dangote is spending before producing a liter of petrol, and how much they are selling that petrol to the marketers. The NMDPRA has the powers, has the legal powers. They have the powers to seal up Dangote refinery. This is how much powers they have. So they should just be on their game. But you know the other thing? Um, it's no longer Dangote alone being the supplier. Marketers under this deregulated regime should also have the ability to go and import petroleum products. So if Dangote's price is more than what is being imported, then they will be importing and we will be buying imported products while Dangote Refinery knows what he will do with his high-priced products. This is the way it should be. The entire market should be opened. These people should receive the necessary support to be able to import as well, so that the imported product should be competing with the Dangote Refinery products. You know, and then the Dangote Refinery products are themselves competing with each other through the different marketers in, in, the, in the economy. But look, all that we are saying here is in the immediate term, in the short term to medium term. But the medium to long term solution to this whole thing is Nigeria's installed capacity of 425,000 barrels of crude oil refining per day. President Tinibu, we beg you, please be on the side of Nigerians. Do something about these refineries. The NMPCL has proved for so long, even since you were governor of Lagos State, you know that the NMPCL has not produced uh, uh, products from these refineries. So I don't understand your patience with the NMPCL. You are getting into two years in office, and the NMPCL has not refined a single liter of petrol from these refineries. Is it when you finish four years that you will know that they can't do it? If President Tinibu today announces that these four refineries are up for either outright sale or to be transferred to operators who will fix them and then refine products, and then the government will allow them to recover their cost while they put petrol to Nigeria, the NMPCL operated refineries now have capacity to sell petrol at much cheaper rates to Nigerians than even Dangote refinery. Why? Because Dangote refinery petrol, as we're buying it now, in every liter, he's recovering his $20 billion investment. The NMPCL investment is already been recovered. So that cost not will be there. And we have been paying the staff in the refineries, in the NMPCL refineries, for them producing nothing. So if they now start producing, then the, the cost that we have already been paying there will not be additional cost. We'll just be getting petrol at no extra cost that we have been paying them now. And you know, because Nigerians own the crude and Nigerians own the refineries, this whole idea of plant will be thrown into the garbage bin. Why are you talking about plant when you are the one that owns the yam and you are making the panadian for your family? You know? So we'll be able to get petrol at prices that will fool the inflation, that will make petroleum products more available and more cheaply available to Nigerians so that the economy can begin to grow. So President Tinibu has a big decision here, and we're getting impatient with him. Why is it that he's a year and a half into office and these refineries, he hasn't taken a decisive action on them the way he took decisive action on uh, forest unification, fuel subsidy is gone, hiking interest rate, doing an electricity tariff and all that. He's leaving these refineries in the hands of the NPCL, who have continued to give us fake promises. Well, so he is, is, he is the, he the, is the minister deal. of uh, petroleum, by the way. 
He's the Minister of Petroleum, by and the way. And he's the so Minister of that, Petroleum. That's his, his exactly. jurisdiction. Apart from being the, the president. Yes. Okay, but we don't we don't even know Look, what is uh, going uh, on. Because yeah, Yamgo, by the time the by, by the time the four refineries petroleum uh, products are in the market, Dangote refineries products are in the market, anybody who wants to import are in the market. That is when Nigerians will know the real cost of petrol in Nigeria and all other products. Well, I don't even have faith in the in the um uh, and uh, uh, the Portaco refinery or the other four refineries owned by Nigeria, I don't even have faith that when they come on stream, they are going to uh, make uh, petrol cheaper. Because if NNPCL will come out and tell us the amount they bought from Dangote refinery, which was, which was a lie, according to Dangote anyway, was a lie. It was not, the, even though we are quarreling with Dangote, that he should have told us how he sold the, the fuel to uh, to NNPCL, but he didn't tell us, he just said that that was not a true figure that we were given. So if NNPCL will give us a figure um, that will make us believe something different, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure when they begin to refine we are going to see anything. Perhaps what will give us that kind of um, uh, insight into what petrol should really cost is if, like the headline on Punch newspaper today says, uh, South Korean investors planning for Nigerian refine refineries. South Korea wants to come or foreign investors want to come and also have refineries in Nigeria. Perhaps when that happens, we can f see the competition that you're talking about. But otherwise, I just see as it is the same and same. NNPC, Dangote, they are just uh, uh, talking into their cheeks. We, we cannot know what is really going on. And precisely. And that's my point as well. I don't have faith in the NNPCL. And that is why I said I'm surprised that President Tinubu has taken this long to take a decisive action on the on the refineries. Because, like I said, since President Tinubu was uh, was a governor in Lagos State, these refineries have not refined a liter of petrol or any other product. So, the refineries need to be taken away from the NNPCR. That's the solution. Take it away from the NNPCR. What do you do with them? The president can sell them outrightly to investors. And people say, oh, the refineries are dead dogs. They are not dead dogs. Let's not forget that um, President Obasanjo, uh, at the twilight of his administration in 2007, he sold a percentage, not even the 100 percent, a percentage of the Kaduna and Potaka refineries for over $700 million to a consortium that had even Dangote inside, had the dollar inside and co. So that is the kind of monies that the refineries can make. But look, even if push comes to shove, it is better for Nigeria to even sell these four refineries at $1, $1 each, so that the investors can then bring in money and fix the refineries and put products in the market. So it could be an outright sell, or President Tinubu can simply say, start Korea, OK, Shell, OK, Mobile, OK, Total, uh, uh, um, Chevron, each of you take these refineries, all right, and fix them and be refining products for us and put the products in the market. Once that happens, you will now discover that Nigeria will be oversupplied with petroleum products. So even by common laws of uh, economics, that is demand and supply, the higher the supply, the lower the price. That's the first thing. And then the next thing is that competition will now set in. Is it the products coming from uh, this particular operator? He can't afford to charge high prices because the other operators will also put products in the market and try to take the market. So as, as all the operators are trying to take the market, they will reduce the cost of uh, petroleum products to marginal profit levels. This is what is needed. You know, <clears throat> and, and, and until we do this, I don't think we're going to get a, a, a definite solution to this. Uh, I'm just wondering, where, if we talk about, as, as we're talking about uh, refineries, the four refineries that have, have not started working, uh, possible investors that are coming in to, to establish refineries, and maybe even uh, local investors also trying to establish refineries, I'm wondering where the crude will be coming from. Even as uh, today on uh, the Punch newspaper, we saw stop crude for loan deals, Dangote tells government, which means this crude for loans is still happening. 
And if these refineries enter here, will we even have enough crude to supply these uh, refineries? Dangote has a capacity of 650,000, I think, and he's only going to be getting about 400,000 uh, uh, barrels of, uh, uh, of, um, of crude daily. So we have not talked about other modular refineries and all that. There is no crude even for local refining. So where will we be getting the crude? I'm just thinking loud. Oh, well, this kind of so yeah, yeah. I mean, good, good thinking there. Uh, because if you look at the current situation, uh, we, we don't have enough crude to even give to Dangote refinery. Not to talk about uh, the other refineries coming up, because a chunk of the crude we are producing belongs to the IOCs anyway, and the IOCs have already committed their crude to their own refineries somewhere around the world. So that's correct. But let's not forget Nyamgo that I, I worked in the Nigeria oil industry. I worked in Nigeria oil industry in the, in the, in the, in the 90s into the, to, into the 2000s. And as at the time I, I was working in Nigeria oil industry, Nigeria was producing 2 million barrels of crude oil per day. Nigeria has actually attained 2.5 million barrels of production per day. That means in stored capacity, what is already on the ground can produce 2.5 million barrels per day. There are reasons why we are, we are now producing 1.3, 1.4 million. And it only needs President Tinubu to unlock those reasons, to take executive action to unlock those reasons and return us to the 2 million, 2.5 million barrels per day. And then offer sweetened deals, create the enabling environment for more investment to come in. So even as the world is transiting to new energy, there are still investments in fossil fuels. As we speak today, there are rigs all over the world that are drilling for crude oil. And you know, when I was working for the uh, oil industry in the 90s to the 2000s, there was this plan. I've forgotten the specific name for the plan. But it meant that by the year 2020, Nigeria will be producing 4 million barrels of crude oil per day and will have 200 billion uh, um, barrels of uh, crude reserve. In Nigeria, we make plans and we don't put them on paper. We don't give effect to them. The President Tinubu can ask that SPAS should take that plan, dust it up properly with current realities, and let us see how we can shift production to at least like the 3 million barrels per day within a specific time. You know? So, again, even what we are producing, we are stealing it. And for me, this is the painful aspect. Painful aspect in the sense that Nigeria is spending a huge chunk of her budget on security, on the security architecture. And the same security with their eyes open allow our crude oil to be stolen. Instead of President Tinibu to take action against them, give a charge to the chief of Naval staff. He's the man responsible to police our waters. Tell him, look, if Oga, one barrel, one barrel of crude oil is stolen under your watch, you are going home. Yeah, that but, but the Nick, there, Nick I, I, know we, I know we are wrapping up, but there's a conspiracy theory, uh, because I don't have the facts before me, that actually they could, Nigeria could be producing that 4 million uh, barrels of uh, crude per day, but these, uh, the politicians let me just generalize it, the politicians have quotas in these uh, number of barrels per day. So when the official one is one point something million, the rest of them is shared amongst them and it is not, it is not official. That's a conspiracy theory. But if you check how much we were, we were producing in the 90s into the 2000s that you were there and the fact that we are not able to produ produce as much as 2 million uh, right now, uh, then it is lending some kind of credibility to the fact that maybe this thing is being produced, but it cannot be official. Well, that is where President Tinibu needs to side with Nigerians. He is in office to work for Nigerians. He's not in office to work for any cabal or anybody stealing Nigeria crude oil or racketeering or crude oil production. I mean, at his age, what does he have to lose? You understand? He just needs to make a name, to 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 leave a legacy. To to he uh, he has he has a definite opportunity in the twilight years of his life to change the narrative, to change Nigeria for good, so that 
look, people who lived in the 19th century, that's the people who were here in 18 something, mm. all of them are dead and gone. Mm. So the people, those of us who are here now, we are just on the stage. Look, in the next 50 years, we, most of us will not be here again. So President Tindebo has got this definite opportunity at the twilight of his own life to change Nigeria for good. So that even when he's gone, people will continue remembering him the way the Man Mandela's are being remembered today, the Liu Kuan Yu's. So he is not a poor man. He has already used his mouth to say, I'm rich enough. So this is where he has, he has a moral responsibility to say that the children of Nigeria have suffered too, too long, the people of Nigeria have suffered too long, I am going to work for Nigerians and I'm not going to work for any cabas. And as a commander in chief, he has the powers to run upon them. Because he, indeed, uh, Dangote in, uh, in, in his Bloomberg uh, interview, and even before then, he said that, look, the, 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 the cabal, or what did he call them, the mafia in the Nigerian oil industry is more deadly than the uh, the drug mafia and he's a man who is inside so we should believe what he's saying and that's where leadership comes in and president tinibu needs to provide that mm. okay well that's the much we can take chris uh, i'd like to thank you for coming on the show today let's hope that we get to better days and we see transparency in that sector because a lot of things in nigeria hang on the energy sector thank you so much nick for coming on the program uh, thank you so very much. I cannot go to the accountant's conference. <laughs> Have a nice day. To all you too. Bye. Okay, we've been talking with uh, Nick Agule, an energy expert. We're looking at the fact that Dangote um, uh, fuel will no longer be solely lifted by the NNPCL. That role of middleman has been removed from their hands. And what are the fortunes of Nigeria? And then we looked at sundry other things in the energy sector. And that is how we wrap up the show this morning. We thank you for being a part of the show and hopefully we'll meet again for another edition of The Breakfast. My name is Nyam Gul Agaji. <laughs>